All right, guys, we got this. Let's go. Good white trips. Eat. Close next go. On one. On one. Ready? Three. What's going on everyone, ANCAP24 here from huddle.gg and in today's video we're going to take a question out of the YouTube comment section asked by Marcus Jones and he said, is there any plays you know that beats cover three match? Now Marcus, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this and what I'm going to show you guys, when he talks about cover three match, it can be a play in which has the words physically cover three match or it can be any play that has these light purples. So if you look through here, a lot of your cover three blitzes, Buck Slant 3 is a cover three match coverage. If you look over here where you're going to overload three, that is a cover three match coverage. Um, corner blitz is a cover three match coverage, okay? Anything with those light purples are gonna be a cover three match. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and call cover three match because cover three match itself is the hardest to beat because it doesn't blitz any extra players. And it has two hook curls that also match um, depending on route combinations. And when I say match, they turn from potentially being zone coverage and they match into man coverage, okay? So I wanna make sure that you understand that. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the gun stack Y flex. This is a formation uh, in which I just did my latest game plan that dropped today on our website at huddle.gg. It's something that I'm really proud of as a complement to our previous uh, gun empty tray stack. And I believe that, you know, that formation was something that got rave reviews on. And I believe that this formation combined with it is just going to blow your mind as far as how much fun you can have um, just in a different style and just being ahead of your opponent and having a solution for everything. So I want to start off by just going ahead and showing you that um, this is a cover three match beater and we're going to call PA read. Okay, now PA read is a great play because it's got this crosser that's naturally on there. If you're playing Mutt, you can always put a crosser on that player if you've got uh, abilities. But this play has a crosser and I'm gonna use that to our advantage. Now, what I wanna talk about when it comes to cover three match is it only works like this in certain uh, formations and certain alignments. You need to have somebody that's basically out wide and the B is, is considered an out wide player and you have to have somebody that is basically either in the slot or on the line of scrimmage as a tight end in order to make this work. And I'm gonna kind of show you exactly how to make this. Now, if you look to the left side of the field, it will not work on the left side because those guys are in a compressed alignment. There is no far out receiver. They're both inside basically in a stack alignment, okay? And I'm gonna kind of go through this and explain why. So what you need to do in order for players to convert from uh, zone to man is you have to have them go vertical five yards. So vertical could mean I can put this A on a curl, I can put him on an in as long as he goes past that five yard mark. I could put him on a slant as long as he's not pressing and cover three match is not a pressing um, type of defense. So I can get away with that slant and I'm gonna show you that. And then I'm just gonna put this B on a, um, a smart route because I want him to do his route quicker. Okay. Now, if you look at this defense, I'm going to be able to get both the A and the B to get the players above them to follow them to wherever the route goes and basically play man on them, opening up the whole right side of the field. Now, I mentioned earlier that cover three match itself is the toughest because these hook curls will also match. If I don't do anything, and I'm going to show you here, the hook curl on the right, the one with the M over his head, is going to play the Y. Now, a lot of times it's it's going to be something that is so late that doesn't even make any difference. And you can see that we still were able to get the one play score. But if you were to look at number 51 Bentley, he was in transition of making sure that that was a guy that he was going to uh, match. And if you're playing Mutt and they've got a safety here that's got better ball skills, you can see that he may be able to make a play. And once you see that they go ahead, you see he's going to turn his back and he's going to go match this guy and go follow him down the field. Obviously, it was too late for this, um, you know, for him to make a play, but that's that. If you look at this one here, you can see that um, once we make the cut to the inside, that guy is going to follow him across the field, and he's going to have man coverage him across the field as soon as he passes that five-yard mark. Same with this player. If you see once he passes the five-yard mark, which basically is going to be the 45, watch how Gilmore is going to change, and he's going to turn. Watch. See how he turns? As soon as I hit that five mark, he turns his body, and now you know he's going to play him man up. And he's going to come down by manning these guys up we allow this guy to get over the top 
catch the ball and get the easy play. So I'm trying to teach you guys concepts so that way you can kind of use this in whatever you want to use. Now, how do we get this M to basically, uh, the, that linebacker with the M over his head to not follow the Y? It's simply put a third threat over there by putting this RB on a swing route. And by doing so, he's going to come down. He's now going to play that player because he's on the right side. And that's going to just make it a lot easier for you to hit this Y across the field. And unfortunately, we got to throw out a stack. But you can see even with that, we were able to have such a wide open player that we got the ball to him. Now, I want to go a little bit further with this because, you know, I, I like to teach as much as possible so you guys can understand. What if we took the same exact route combination, right? So this is all we're doing. And we move the B in. From what I told you, this should not work, right? And it won't. And the reason why is because the B is no longer outside. So I just want to make sure you understand that this is very alignment based and a lot and very formation based. Okay. So watch what happens. It's the same exact thing, but now everybody's going to be playing a drop coverage. Okay. I just wanted to um, get the, the film so you can see it. And what I mean by drop coverage is they're going to play exactly how um, the the player basically indicates, right? So match is, is, is going to convert to man coverage, but because I moved that guy in, now this guy's going to play a deep third. Um, this guy's going to be playing a seam flat, which basically he's going to play, you know, kind of like in, in between a, a curl flat and, and a hard flat type deal. And then this guy's going to play his hook curl. No one's matching their players. All they're doing is they're playing a specific spot and they're dropping to it, right? And that's, that's basically... Um, we were able to change that. And, and a lot of times that's that's a benefit for you if you're doing a flood concept. Like if I don't want them to be in a, a, a matching coverage, if I move the B in, now I can go ahead to a different type of setup and attack. Like for instance, what if I wanted to do something like this, right? Where I know that they're in cover three match, but now I want to drive the player B down the field. I want to put the A underneath and I want the Y coming across. This is going to beat this type of coverage because... Now I used new, I basically put them in cover three by doing so, right? So there's pluses and minuses to knowing how an alignment is going to affect the defense. Now, if I was to put this player here and block them, put the uh, B on its, um, oops, I messed up. I'm gonna put the B on its, um, on a smart route, put the RB on a swing. And all I did was move the A in. I wanna show you what happens here they're going to match okay so you could see that we were able to still do it and 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 have success with it i'm going to show you this one little one step further here if you look at this a and i'm going to put them on a slant put the b on its smart route put the rb on is it this is the exact same thing we start off with but when i move him here his his stem does not get him to five yards before i get him to move and watch what happens here He's not going to get to that five yard mark, meaning these guys are not going to match anymore. So it's very important that all the routes go five yards for it to work. You're better off not putting a route on the field if he doesn't go five yards to get the matching. All right. So I wanted to kind of show it to you. I'm going to go just one more formation to kind of give it the hammered in so you guys know. I'm going to call PA read on the spread Y slot flex, okay? PA read basically is the same thing to the opposite side. Now, what you should get, I'm gonna go ahead and, and kind of show this here. I'm gonna put the Y on that slant and put the X on a smart route and you basically got the same thing. We got the same, um, you know, smart routed comeback. You got the same, um, the uh, slant. And then I'm just gonna block the running back just so that we can have a little bit of protection. I wanna show you here that you're gonna get matching on both sides of the field, okay? Now, does that help us? It doesn't in this situation because they're going to match, right? Um, you should see that it's a two by two. They both got the uh, players that have the, that that got a um, a slot player and they got an outside player. Now, how do I turn off the matching so that only one side matches so I can attack it? And what you do is you put a third threat on the line of scrimmage, right? Let's put him on the line of scrimmage. I'll just go ahead and just basically put him on a flat route. It doesn't really matter. And so what I'm doing here is I'm putting the Y on a slant. I'm, I'm smart routing the um, X receiver. And by putting him on the line of scrimmage, now I've got three threats instead of two on the line of scrimmage. The right side will not match, but the left side will. And now what you're going to see is that the A is going to go across. Nobody's going to cover him. 
and now you've got the ability to have an easy catch over there, okay? So understanding how seam flats, how cover three match works is really gonna be beneficial for you when you attack defenses. This is a type of detail that we go into when we do our game plans, guys. I really study the game to really get the best tips possible so that I'm doing the homework for you. You guys can just enjoy getting the information and then just going ahead and playing it. It's kind of a time saver stuff, guys. So this is why when um, you know I get passionate about uh, game plans and, and really get excited about giving you guys information, a lot of times it's because I know how if you just had the knowledge, if you just knew when to use what, um, you're going to be that much better of a player. And that's what our game plans do. So definitely check it out, Huddle GG. Just went ahead and dropped our second formation out of Pittsburgh. I know you guys are going to love it. Appreciate you guys, um, and definitely want to make sure that I call out Marcus Jones again. Um, we did give you guys the promise. If we use one of your um, questions, we will make sure that we get you a free game plan. So Marcus, please put in the chat um, either a Twitter name that we can get a hold of you or an email address that we can send that code to. Uh, we appreciate you all again, and we'll see you on tomorrow's video.